Hey all, thanks for joining the presentation. Today we're going to talk about distributed workload generator for performance and load testing using emerging technologies. The internal project name is called JAS, JMeter as a service. This is Vishnumurti, an automation technologist in Dell Technologies, working in infrastructure solution group. Uh, with 15 plus years experience in leading product validation and automation development efforts. I worked on server storage and system management software validation efforts. And I have responsible in delivering the automation frameworks and tools for the Dell. I have nine patents got granted in USPTO and 2128 disclosures was recognized by the Dell patent committee and presented multiple technical papers in different conferences, including PyCon, Step-in, and Target Quality Conferences. So the agenda of this presentation today is to cover what we do in server validation org, and what is exactly the system testing, what tools we use it, what are the current challenges with the tools, and why we build this particular solution, what is the technology stack, and high level overview of this entire solution will be explained in this particular presentation. The server validation group is located in three different regions Austin, Bangalore, and Taipei. We do end to end server validation, and function, functional and non functional testing will be tested with, with all these teams before it leads to the market. In this particular presentation, we focus more on non functional testing. Uh, we also call it system testing in our organization. Uh, what is exactly system testing? It's pretty focused on the customer workloads, real-time workloads running on a server, and we see how the server is behaving with these particular workloads. Uh, we try to simulate the real-time real-world customer workloads on the system with a typical application like a database mail on the servers and see how this actually server is responding for the particular workloads. Uh, we, we also follow similarly that how the way the customer deploy or in, a, in a, their server in a data center. We also simulate the same thing. Uh, we deploy and configure the server and we try to deploy the application. And using these particular workload generators, we try to simulate the customer workloads on the server. And then we also monitor the system over the long, 120 hours. Uh, during this particular simulation of the customer workload, if there is any updates or software updates or service updates we need to, we do the service updates and we continue to run the workloads. And the last of the phase, we try to retire the system on the same thing. So the main focus is to make sure that how the customer uses, what the customer uses the workloads, we try to use the same thing. And we try to simulate the same workloads on in the in a lab on the same server and see how the server is behaving is what scope of this particular system testing phase. So as I mentioned, we try to simulate the customer workloads using the simulators or customer load generators. There are multiple tools available in the market, uh, but a lot of tools have its own, it comes up with its own challenges. Uh, we'll be talking on the next slide. So one of the key challenges here for us is that uh, they need to be installed on the local every lab and on the appropriate hardware. Uh, leveraging this particular solution across regions is become a little bit more com challenging. Uh, due to the proprietary hardware and every lab need to be look, installed, it's become more and more expensive and complex architecture. And also we need to have a specific uh, performance engineers to develop any new scripts because of the tools and their own specific uh, tools and scripting languages. And one of the key challenges what we started looking is that uh, if you want to look at any data, historical data analytics and correlation, it, this uh, platforms or the solutions are become difficult to customize it to our requirements. So with this particular challenge, we started looking at how, how do we build our own solution in our own lab, which can get, which can solve some of these challenges for us. So that's where we build this particular solution called JAS, JMeter service. It's basically on-premises cloud solution. It's 100% built on open source tools like a JMeter, Docker, Elasticsearch, and it runs on a, our own servers as a load generators. And we also, it's can able to scale across regions and across labs, massively supported, massively scaling is supported. And we can able to build or incorporate new workloads with, uh, with the support of this particular application on JMeter. 
and we also it also has a rest interface so that we can able to integrate or automate uh, continuous integration uh, flows with this particular solution and finally we also all the data we store it in database so that we can able to use this particular data for advanced dashboards and visualizations for live monitoring as well as historical data analysis so we talked about we built this one and um, with on most of the 100 plus open source solutions uh, some of the four key open source solutions we'll be talking in this particular slide uh, one is first is jmeter uh, this is basically an platform independent solution supported multi threading framework again it's open source it supported multiple wide number of load tests uh, this is one of the industry leading uh, performance and load testing tool which we actually try to leverage in our solution and next is docker and docker swarm uh, docker are basically as portable solutions which can able to keep the jmeter and run our own uh, run our own scripts on the container and it's very quickly dis disposable and very resource efficient actually and again it's open source so docker are using the docker swarm we are can orchestrate multiple docker nodes and we can able to load balance the containers across the low on docker nodes and we can able to manage it so the docker swarm is our orchestration solution and it again has a rest interface it's open source so we can able to use it freely in our solution and finally the elastic search our database uh, which is basically again it has a rest interface it's open source and it can able to store and it has a distributed real time search engine which can able, which can support multiple transactions at the same time actually these are key solutions which we use there are a couple of more solutions are there which we'll be talking in the next slide so as I mentioned, we actually use Dell servers as a physical layer to run all this particular, run all this our load generators and application. And we also install Ubuntu on top of that. And then we install the Docker we, on every node and we join all these nodes to the Docker Swarm cluster. And the Harbor is again an open source solution to keep the Docker registry. Uh, instead of using a public Docker hub, we will be using our own private Docker hub to hold our registry, uh, hold our Docker images and use the same thing in our solution. And thus, the JMeter is a centralized application for the workload generators. The Groovy is a programming language which we use to develop this particular workloads, new workloads in the JMeter. And also, we use Python to do end to end solution design and development purpose. Our Elasticsearch is our database for all the records and all the transactions. We store it here. And we have multiple UIs for each role. For example, if a end user would like to run any workloads, we use Axon as lightweight web front end for uh, running the jobs and orchestrating the jobs and portrait and Jabbix for our infrastructure management monitoring purpose uh, alerting purpose we use it and Grafana our interface uh, for visualizing the data visualizing the data from the workloads what we are running in the backend so this is the technical technology stack what we built uh, for the jazz and uh, there are a couple of more slides which will talk about how this entire jazz solution works end to end so in a high level, this particular slide will cover it. High level JAS solution, uh, how it works and what is the way it orchestrates. Uh, so when a user goes to Axon and submits a job saying that this is a particular workload we would like to run on this particular application. So the job will be submitted to the load generators as a Docker service. Uh, the load generators will bring up the containers and these containers will have JMeter script from the database to get it and it runs with the JMeter script to start generating the load on the network infrastructure. So all the data what we have generated on the load generator and all the data what we generate on the system will be collecting into the elastic search and visualizing in the Grafana as a correlation data. In the previous slide we talked about very high level how the way the orchestration happens, but in this particular slide we talk about more detail how the way the data flow happens between that nodes between the database and between the containers. So when a user goes to Axon and submits a job, the job will be submitted to the Docker Swarm as a Docker service, uh, submitted to the manager as a Docker service. Uh, this Docker service will have all the details, what, how many number of contents we need to run, what is the database unique ID, we need to go ahead and find the information. All this information will be part of the Docker service. At the same time, Axon also goes back and updates this information into the Elasticsearch database details like a docker service details axon workflow details and jmeter workload details so that when the docker service brings up the containers the jmeter docker containers these containers use this particular unique id to go back and get the information about the jmeter scripts once the jmeter scripts are available in the container it's use the script it starts generating the load on the system so this is the cycle this is the way it starts generating the load on the system at the same time the JMeter Docker container also send all the information related to container logs, container performance metrics, and JMeter logs into the database. 
At the same time, we also collect all the server related information like software logs, OS metrics and hardware logs from the server into the database. So now with the container logs and so in the server data, we are able to correlate and we are able to show the live dashboard of different artifacts from the, for the user in a, in a live dashboard actually. And this dashboard can be useful for the live as well as historical data analytics. Now, we sh in this particular picture, we shown that there is a two Docker containers came up and it started stress in the system. But what if the the, container, the load is not enough on the system? So we would like to increase the load. So it has this particular solution has a dynamic scale up and scale down feature so that users can able to increase the load on the system by increasing number of users actually. So now user goes back to Docker service and increase number of containers from the two to three. So the new container will come up on a load distributed load uh, manner on a new uh, in a new load generator. This new container we again go back to the Docker database and finds out all the information, gets the, all the information and start the JMeter script. Again, it sends all the data to the Docker database and also it starts pumping the stress on your server. This way we can able to scale up or scale down the num load on the system based on the user requirements. So in the previous picture, we shown the data flow. In this picture, we will show, show about how the way we can able to scale this solution across regions and across labs without deploying the solution everywhere. So when a user goes to Axon, the job will be submitted to the Docker managers. The manager actually orchestrates uh, these particular containers uh, on a specific geolocator load generators in the Docker cluster. So for example, in this example, we have three load generators in Bangalore lab, three load generators in Austin lab. Based on the user request, the containers will be placed in the load generators so that the traffic between the server and load generator will be insulated and in the it will be located in the lab itself so that we don't run behind run across the van the traffic we don't run across the van actually this is one of the uh, reason we would like to uh, geotag the nodes and run the traffic inside the lab as well as the system will get a better utilization from this particular load generators so now uh, we talked about the data flow we talked about the solution now what are the workloads we supported what are the workloads we use as part of the this entire system testing phase we have different workloads uh, which are specific to the cpu specific to memory specific to disk actually uh, we will be covering that in this particular slide so the first type of workloads like web workloads if a user has a ias or a apache web server we're using this particular jazz solution we can able to test the application which is again on the server and we also have two different workloads. One is basically in a file workloads, which is basically inter network intensive or disk intensive workloads, which are running on FTP and fire SMB protocols. And the next one is basically the MS Exchange and mail workloads, which is on running on a mail workloads actually. Apart from that, we have a wide variety of database workloads. Uh, we can take a SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB. These are all the workloads. Uh, these are all the workloads uh, runs on a particular server where we have this particular applications which can stress the system and have seen a utilization how it works out. We also include a new workload called OmniSky, which is basically a GPU powered database uh, which runs on GPU controllers so that we can able to get, see the, how the GPU is getting utilized using this particular database actually. So these are the high number of workloads we supported and we also support any workload which using the JMeter Groovy scripting we can able to add and we can able to run in the this particular application. So we will have a demo quick demo on the solution how it works uh, in this demo we will be covering the how jazz solution generate the load on a particular web server a web application and how we can able to scale up number of features so that we can able to increase the load on the system and as well as we can see how we can able to stop and reduce stop the workload and stop the utilization of the system actually We have using a web application. Uh, we are running a web application on a particular this particular system where you can see now CPU utilization is two percent. The web application is running. This is a web application which basically generates random numbers so that which can increase the CPU load on the system actually. So we take this particular web application. User comes to this particular UI and gives all the details like another web web path. The number of users, which location you would like to run, 
which now how many threads you would like to run all these details will be provided to this web ui the web ui takes this information and submits the job to the docker cluster as well as sends this data to the database So once the job is created on the Docker cluster, you can see the job, which is basically created here as a Docker service. And you can see number of containers we asked that one, one virtual user will be created in the backend as a container. With this container, the, this container will goes back and gets the data from the database, what particular workload we need to run and what is the script. And it starts the script. With the script, it automatically starts the stress on the system actually. You can see that here, the CPU stress has started increasing because number of, uh, Threads actually opens number of sessions on the system with the HTTP sessions, so that all the every session will be stress the system individually, independently. So we also have small dashboards where we user can able to monitor how many, many what workloads he is running and what is the number of contents he is running and what is the error percentage and all this stuff. And we also show the same information in the Grafana where user can able to monitor number of users, error percentage, timeline chart of the errors and what type of errors we're seeing on all the data here. So this is the way user can able to start the workload and monitor the workload from the web UIs. As we as we demonstrated, as we presented, as we explained in the preferred demo, we can all, we have seen now this particular system is getting utilized 66 percent. We would like to increase the load, so we have an option called scale up. Using the scale up operation, we can able to scale up the number of users, or we can scale down the number of users. We can scale down the number of users. So in this particular demo, we will be increasing the number of users from the two users to one user to two users. So now we have two containers running. On the system, on the on the in the Docker service, the two containers are also getting the got the JMA description started running the new workload. Now we can see all the data here, and then automatically when the new container comes up, the new container again starts new threads. Our new threads are actually generate more load on the system. So you can now we can see the CPU utilization gains to the ninety nine percent. This way, user has a flexibility to increase the load or reduce the load dynamically based on user requirements through the UI. Or through the REST interface using this particular on this particular application. So now we can see all the data over the Grafana as well as in the dashboards. Also, the same data will be reflected. Now we also in the end when the user is complete his entire execution, you would like to stop. User come back here and he can able to stop the workload using this particular sequence. So once he says that we would like to stop the workload, the the Docker service will be removed from the cluster. Automatically, containers will be removed, and then the stress on the system will be goes to zero. We can also see the same information where the details of the Jazz dashboard is no more particular job. So this is the way user can able to start scale up or scale down and stop the workload on the system. So this is process seamless and users can able to run uh, as many as users as much as well as duration. We can able to continue to run this uh, run the stress on the system actually. What next? We are also working on next generation workloads uh, like animation control, video streaming workloads, social media, TensorFlow. These are the new workloads which are using by the customers. So we would like to add these workloads in our solution and test it before we release this servers to the market. And when the customer is using, we make sure that these solutions seamlessly working on servers. So this is what end-to-end -end jazz solution we have built. And uh, if any questions you have, please feel to reach us. This is focused more on a server and storage uh, devices. How do we make sure that we stress the, these two components and stress it and make sure that we test all the workloads on the system and before we release to the market. Thank you. Thanks for joining the presentation. Thank you for attending this session. If you have any feel, if you have, please share your feedback on this session. Thank you.